So how do I come up with an equilibrium expression for a given reaction? So fortunately this idea is not that bad. It's pretty easy to do. Don't try to hypercomplicate it. There's a couple of exceptions that you need to remember. We'll talk about that in a second. But really what I need is the bounced reaction. And I need to make sure there's a double-headed arrow in there to make sure we're talking about an equilibrium reaction. And it needs to be an equilibrium reaction for us to come up with an equilibrium expression. So beyond that, if I have the bounced reaction, it's really the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So these subscript G and H here are the stoichiometric coefficients in front of my species. So if G happened to be a 2, this would be a 2 here. So it's just uh, products divided by reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. And then remember, the reactants and the products, they need to be in concentrations of molarity. So if I look at a given reaction here, um, you go ahead and you say, what are my products? CS2, what are my reactants? H2, so those go on top here. And you say with CS2, there's an implied one, so we don't have to do anything with that. But with H2, there is a four, so we need to raise the concentration of H2 to the fourth power. We then divide by the reactants, H2S and CH4. Uh, once again, CH2 has got an implied one, but H2 has got a 2 out in front of there, so we need to raise the concentration of H2 to the second power. It's that simple. But one thing you need to remember, though, is that if any of my species has the subscript S or L, it's a solid or a liquid, we do not include that in the equilibrium expression. So that idea is that the we leave out solids and liquids in our equilibrium expressions because if we add more solid or more liquid to my reaction the concentration of those species do not change. So here with the concentration if I was to add more H2S to the reaction mixture the concentration of H2S would actually change and that's why H2S is involved in our equilibrium expression. However if I had a solid and I say had like one gram of solid at the bottom it really doesn't have a concentration. So don't get me wrong, it's involved in the reaction, but if I add two grams of um, my solid, it does not change the concentration of the solid, so we leave it out of the equilibrium expression. So this is an important idea that from here on out, whenever you see a reaction that involves an equilibrium, you need to check these subscripts inside of there and make sure that they are not a S or an L, a solid or, or a liquid because those really are not involved in our equilibrium expression. So when we do calculations or we do Le Chatelier's principle that we're going to talk about next, this does not really affect the equilibrium. So the ones that we are looking out for is the subscript G, and pretty soon we are also going to look at the subscript AQ or aqueous. Those are the things that show up in my equilibrium expression. So when I look at this reaction, it's still the same thing. Products divided by reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. But in this case, because carbon is a solid, it does not show up in there. We do not put carbon with brackets around it. So it is not it actually involved in my equilibrium expression. All the other species are too. So the same thing is true with water. And this is going to be important because we're going to see water quite a bit in an upcoming chapter when we start talking about acids and bases water doesn't show up inside of equilibrium expressions. Even though it might be very important for a given reaction, when we look at the equilibrium, it does not show up. So when I say what's the equilibrium expression for this reaction, once again, it's products divided by reactants. And this one's sort of strange, and this is why I put it in there. My None of my products show up in my equilibrium expression. And so this one's tricky. Um, when I go and write the equilibrium expression, I have nothing on top. So I have to put a placeholder one because I need to divide and then put my reactants on the bottom. So here H2 and O2, because they're subscript gas, they show up um, in the bottom. And then remember this two here is that two right here. So let's do an example of a problem involving this. And like I said before, equilibrium problems in their most basic sense, really there's only two variables. Uh, the concentration of my species and my k values. So I can either give you all the concentrations, have you calculate k, or give you k and some of the concentrations and have you find um, 
an equilibrium, uh, unknown equilibrium concentration. So notice it's important for me to formally state that the situation of the problem that I am is at equilibrium. So I've given this reaction time to reach equilibrium. Uh, what happens when we're not at equilibrium? That's a good question. We will uh, talk about that pretty soon. But with this one, I am asking you to find Kc for the reaction. So I've given you the equilibrium concentrations, and they need to be equilibrium concentrations for you know my equilibrium expression to equal my k value. So here what I do is I come up with the equilibrium expression for this reaction, so products divided by reactants. Uh, this 2, stoichiometric 2, shows up here. And then all I have to do is plug in all of my numbers. So you got to make sure that you put the numbers in the right place you do the calculation, you get Kc is 4.7 times 10 to the minus 31st. So now remember that Kc's, and like almost all of our Ks, are unitless. So I don't need to put a number here. Remember the subscript C remembers, uh, reminds us that our concentrations are in molarity. So I know it's, it's nerve wracking to not put a unit on something. Typically we put units on almost everything in chemistry, but this is one of the cases where we do not. So we do, um, do not need to put a concentration uh, on our answer.